Hello everybody, Dead Spikes here again and coming at you with another blood video because I have been living in blood the past few days and getting more and more interested in it. And since I released the bleed video the other day, I got lots and lots of messages from people talking about this move. And I wanted to go out and check out if it's all that people are talking about, if it is as amazing as I hear. So I went and did a lot, a lot of testing with a bunch of different builds and to see if Seppuku is worth it, how good it is, and if you should be running it in your build. So before I actually show you the numbers, which I'm sorry if I, if I hurt you guys' brain with how much numbers I'm about to show you, um, but before I show you, I'll tell you the actual test that I did. So for every single one of these tests I'm going to show you, I came to Giant's Grave Post here up in the mountaintops of the Giants, and every single one I hit this giant in front of me. One more thing I will note is none of them were sneak attacks, and I made sure they were not on purpose. In case you do want to see my testing, it was in my last stream um, on March 7th. Towards the end of that stream, you'll see me testing it, and you can watch every single test if you would like. So what is Seppuku? Seppuku is an Ashes of War that you can put onto your weapon. You can see right here. I duplicated it. If you don't know how to do that, you use a special item called... Let's see, where is it? I can show you what it looks like, too. It's a little bit further down. There it is, right here. Lost Ashes of War. These things will let you duplicate your Ashes of War so you can put it on more than one weapon. Um, this Ashes of War that we are using, Seppuku, is going to make it so you can stab yourself. And after you stab yourself, it's going to do two things. It's going to add bleed buildup to your weapon. And it's going to add base damage to your weapon. You can see the base damage increase on this screen right here but you cannot see the the blood loss buildup on the bottom, unfortunately. I don't know why. I guess it was just an oversight by the devs, and it's quite annoying, but I actually did do the testing, and I came out with an estimate at what Seppuku actually does in terms of increasing your blood loss buildup. So now that we know all of the testing I did and what Seppuku does, at the end of this video, by the way, I will show you where to get it. Um, we are now going to go over all of the stats so here is my notepad full of stuff and I'm gonna try to talk about them so our first test we did we put blood affinity on our Uchigatana which we used an Uchigatana at plus zero and two-handed for all of these we put blood affinity on it and we did all of these tests and came out to 20 hits Came out to this damage, and then we did Blood Affinity with Seppuku buff. And we came out to this damage. I don't want to go over everything because I don't want to waste your time. This is all on paper for you. But basically, we did all four of these tests right here to see if Oculent was worth it compared to Blood. My Blood, I mean the Bleed Affinity, or, you know, the one that increases your bleed the most. Um, and these four tests came out to... Oculent Affinity plus Seppuku buff was slightly better than Blood Affinity plus Seppuku buff. After I did all these, I wanted to then go test what I was recommending in my build, which was Keen Affinity. I wanted to test that out versus all of this. So we did Keen Affinity with nothing, and we, were, we only compared to Oculent Affinity plus Seppuku buff because we already knew it was the highest damage in one of these four. And we came out to way, way less damage. Then we did Keen Affinity plus Grease, which is what I recommend a lot. And we came out to still way less damage. And I was kind of surprised at how little Grease actually added. And I, I tested all of the Greases, and I used the best one, which happened to be Fire. And it still did not actually add that much more, just 25 damage. I'm not sure if it starts adding up to be a lot more with a higher upgraded weapon or if it's kind of just crappy. Um, and then we did our final test, which is Keen Affinity plus Seppuku buff. And 
This one came out ahead by just a little bit. By just 200 and uh, let's see, what is that? 266. No, yeah, 266 damage more on Keen Affinity plus Seppuku buff. So you could realistically use either of these, especially if you're using a hybrid build. Um, you can see on the bottom, for all of these tests, I had 80 Arcane. And then for all of these tests, I had 80 Dexterity. Now, after we did these tests, um, I took the base blood loss values of all of these, and I punched it into a calculator and came out to the, the giant over here having an average of 310 in his blood meter. So it takes 310 blood loss to be able to make him bleed. With that, I was able to figure out that Seppuku gives at a minimum of 110 bleed boost, which is insane. So it increases the bleed boost of your weapon by 110 which is almost more than any weapon has base anyways. So this is why Seppuku is being absolutely crazy. And I don't know if they'll ever nerf it or not, but I think this is absurd for a weapon art, if I'm going to be honest. And now you're waiting for my actual answer at the end. Is it worth running Seppuku? Absolutely. If the boss can bleed on this dexterity build, you have to be running this seppuku buff you are going to be dealing way way more damage than just running um grease with keen or just the bleed affinities if the boss cannot bleed you should keep your keen affinity on your your katanas but you should apply grease instead and that's that's kind of the gist of it um, one last thing I want to go over is that you can double buff your katanas to have double seppuku. Um, so I taught you how to duplicate the Ashes of War. Once you put it on both of them, which these should both be keen, by the way. They are not right now, but they should be. Two-hand your left one, and then do your weapon art. After that, pull back out your right one and do your weapon art again. And now you can see that they are both buffed and you will bleed everything out crazy, crazy fast. So I now will show you where this weapon art is. But before I do that, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this information. And make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content. I still have less than 1% of my viewers subscribed, which I think is crazy. So if this is not the first video you watched, please punch that subscribe button. Alright, now I'll show you where to get it. Alright, to get this Ash of War Seppuku, you're going to want to come to the top right of the map of Mountain of the Giants up here on this little frozen lake. And there's going to be a scarab going around in a circle like that. And you're going to want to try to catch him with your weapon. Um, try to run to the other side and cut him off until you finally get him. Just like that. And boom, you'll have Ash of War Seppuku. That'll do it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. This is Vikes out.